Hello everyone. I have a Leslie here. She is one of our clients that we made the design and then she prototyped that design uh, by herself, but followed everything that we designed for her. So she's here today with us and uh, we would like to hear her story, how she got the idea, uh, maybe a little bit about her background and what were the main challenges with the design. We're going to hear afterwards how she approached us, how she found us, and then the position where she is right now, where she's trying to license her product and actually start selling it. Hello, Leslie. Hi, good morning, Alec. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Good. Thank you. Yeah. So can you tell us a bit more about your, how did you get this idea to develop this, this unit? So a lot, like a lot of women, I have collected a lot of jewelry over the years. And the problem I found was I, I kept digging through my boxes and bags and all different ways of storing it, getting really frustrated because I couldn't find just that one perfect piece to wear. And so I started looking on the Internet, of course, like, OK, I want to look for the perfect jewelry organizer. And I found that there was not one. So all the jewelry organizers today are... They, they simply don't have enough space, and I can assure you they don't have the right kind of space. So I decided to invent an organizer myself, and so I came up with the idea of the jewelry closet. The jewelry closet is the first and only fully modular jewelry organizer today, and I would love to get it on the market because I know there is going to be a huge demand the jewelry industry is worth $350 billion, yet the jewelry organizer industry hasn't kept pace with the storage needs of most, most of today's women, young of, of all ages around the world. Oh, wow. That's very interesting information. I mean, I was not in the jewelry, um, I would say, area before you actually introduced this, your project to us, but this is very interesting information. So. How did you did you find some other uh, designers companies prior to us, or how did you find us? I know we were kind of local to you in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, what was that? Was that the main reason that you actually hired us? So one thing that's really important, Alec, is uh, first of all, I had a, a long career and finished up as an executive. I had no time to work on this. I had the idea for really quite some time. So finally, when I had the time, um, I just kind of did the Google search and XPro came up and I sent you guys a, an email and I was flabbergasted at how quickly you guys responded. So I, that right away uh, told me that you were engaged and that's always important. And the fact you were local was extremely helpful, as it turned out later. Um, but it really, I have to say, it was kind of random because when you're starting out as an independent inventor with absolutely no experience in this field, you really, it, it is really, the whole process tends to be pretty random. Um, the one thing that I did realize is that simply having a drawing on the back of a napkin to get to my prototype was just not going to work and that I needed some expertise to really get the precision and accuracy to build out that prototype. Yeah, definitely. Did we begin this project uh, 2022 or 2021? This... 20, March of 2021. 2021. So it was a couple of years. Yeah. Um, you are completely right. And I think we talked about a couple of days ago about this exact topic. People do have a lot of ideas, but they don't know what's next. How, how to basically translate my idea into actual product like you did. So a lot of things changed on our end since 2021, now 2024, um, we realized that we need to inform people, uh, maybe our future clients, how to actually take that napkin sketch into a something functional. And once we start doing that and people are realizing, okay, it's not that hard, but one thing, and you're going to agree with me, it's not that cheap either. Not just, not just the work that we do, but when it comes to the prototyping and manufacturing, that's completely different and more and more expensive, especially when you're developing something new. There are always things that you you don't 
you don't know when you start, but it will come up and there are challenges that we may need to change the design, change the material uh, or, or something else. Especially if things need to be customized, that's, that's really, really, really difficult and expensive. But I think, yeah, the main, the main thing is people need to understand and to realize it's possible to take anything from the napkin sketch to reality, but it just takes time. For you, for example, of course, uh, this is not your full-time full -time job and the other side of things on the side, but yes, it can take two, three, four years to develop something. It's not, it's not just developing, it's finding who is going to sell it for you, license it for you afterwards. It's, it's a whole chain, not just here is a sketch, here is design, that's it. It would be great if you just that. Yes, and another thing to note, though, Alec, is you know you've done so many different uh, drawing sets of drawings for me because of exactly what you're talking about. As you go along with an invention, um, it's actually probably cheaper in the long run for you to work through the drawing process to develop and make the changes that you need versus prototype after prototype after prototype because that that is super expensive. And um, the jewelry closet itself, I've got, uh, as you know, the standalone version. I've got the closet insert version and a version uh, for safes. And then for my last and final product prototype that I've done that you've got there, I had to have parts made with 3D printing. And so I came back to you and I thought, oh, that should be easy. Well, it's a lot more complicated than that. So the point there is that independent inventors in particular, if you don't have this skill set that XPRO has, you need to understand that you do have to reach out and pay for the expertise to get the, the quality that, that you need and that people will be looking for. You can't show up with something that's half-baked, made out of cardboard and tape. You know, it's, it's got to look good. For sure, for sure. Um, especially, I think, this prototype that uh, you made, this is the the plexiglass, I think, PC material. Um, we did our drawings for the sheet metal, but the great thing what you did here is you kind of you kind of found that I would say a cheaper, faster option than a sheet metal, so you can actually make a proof of concept. And that's what I'm telling to my clients all the time. For example, if you're making something out of plastic, don't go immediately for the injection molding. Start with 3D printing, test the design. It's not going to be 100% perfect, maybe 80%, but you can still see how it feels in your hand and how it looks like in real. And then you can pay tens of thousands of dollars for the mold, which is very, very expensive. Um, but yes, definitely doing the drawings, revisions, and, and all that. I also want to touch that thing that you mentioned about us being, being uh, responsive. So me personally, I honestly respond like almost 24-7, seven, seven days a week. Um, because I know that if I am that client, uh, I would like to get that feedback as soon as possible because most of inventors, uh, especially our clients, uh, some of them are big firms. They work Monday to Friday, right? So they're big companies, uh, often, often the weekends, but most of our clients, inventors like you, uh, this is a side gig, uh, a side job that, that you're doing good on your free time, uh, after work or whatever. So you do work on the weekends on your gigs. So that's why we want to be as much as possible proactive. So there's no any waste of time on either end. It would be great like we talk about project on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we begin on Monday. It works good for the both of us. Yes, that, that's right. And uh, again, I can't emphasize the um, uh, really the surprise that I had that you were so incredibly responsive. And then... The next step, of course, was to get the, the drawings developed, and I already had one prototype that I'd had made out of acrylic, but um, there were no drawings that came with it, but at least I had something for you, uh, kind of a blueprint, a real tangible blueprint for you to work off of. And um, the quality of your drawings, the thing that was it, that validated the quality of your drawings was when I uh, took them to get my next prototype made, and I took them to this fabricator. And he was so impressed with the drawings. And um, he did say, yeah, they're not cheap, I can tell, but they were so well done that I got this incredibly highly functional 
prototype made uh, that was the second prototype that I continue to refine over time. So I think that having that third party validation of the quality of your work um, is, is also important for people to know. Yeah, yeah. And um, the one video I made prior to this one, uh, so our audience will be able to see as well, we're going to compile all that together, is me actually showing your, your product and kind of our 3D design work and the drawings so they will be able to see how detailed they are and, and if, even if this looks like let's say a simple box it's not that simple to design and because there are a lot of moving parts as you mentioned you have a multiple versions and so on how is the market uh now working for you when it comes to this product like do you have um all the things in order to license it, to sell it, or people support you when they saw this design, maybe some type of investors and so on. How is that area outside of design? Yes, so the prototype that you have before you uh, is a, I would say it's the 90% solution. So that's a good thing. Um, and obviously your drawings are really helpful with that. And then I'll be able to, at some point, pass those drawings on to a licensee. So in March of 2024, this just this year, I went to a trade show called ASD Market Week in Las Vegas, and I went with a group called Invent America. So it was a bunch of inventors with a whole array of products, and this trade show was very, very big. It was a wholesale business to business, and so uh, I had no idea if there would be other vendors there who buy and then turn around and sell these. Uh, types of products, but lo and behold, I ended up with two um, companies that were interested in this product, and one of them uh, sells on one of the television um, home shopping channels, um, and he was very interested in it, but I have to come to him with product, and I don't, I don't obviously have that, but the other company that I'm really focused hard on is a company out of Canada that is already in this business. And um, so they're, they were very interested in this, with one exception, and that was that I have to have one of the parts patented before they are willing to venture into this licensing agreement with me, so, which is fair because that, that showed me, too, they were very serious. And I think the issue of patent um, protection for inventors is critical. Um, so So I have these things floating out there, these uh, potential customers to get this out to the market. Um, and then at the same time, I also won the 2024 Innovation Award from the Invent America Group. So that was one that was voted on by attendees at the trade show, the other inventors. Um, so um, I was very excited about that. And I had a lot, a lot of interest at the show that um, – women and men, because men buy 44% of the jewelry, gifting it to women. But they have a vested interest in this, so every man needs to buy one of these as well for his woman, so or several. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good selling point, yeah. Um, very interesting that you found all those groups and trade shows. Um, I have a feeling that a lot of people who develop the products, uh, they're just waiting waiting for something to happen without actually pushing their product out so i think doing a good homework when it comes of course first on the design so you know what i'm talking about or someone else but we're still going to educate you and also homework about these trade shows who, can, who you can trust how much royalty or whatever you should give them commissions if they sell your product and of course i think maybe even pricier than our services is patent. So did you also do something about that, the patent wise? How was that process? Yes, yeah, so first of all, what inventors really need to be aware of is that, so independent inventors overall are responsible for about 20% of all the patents that get issued. <clears throat> but a very, very small percent actually are able to commercialize their products because this is not what we have expertise in. So um, it, going into the manufacturing, the marketing, all the you know hiring employees, distribution, all those things, 
it, it is extremely difficult for someone who, uh, you know, you don't want to spend 10 years developing that skill set and potentially lose a lot of money. So the other alternative is the licensing route. People need to be aware, though, when you try to license a product, vendors want people with patent pending status because they don't want to also then turn around and invest, change their production lines, invest a lot of money in a new product if there isn't going to be some kind of intellectual property protection. And so one thing that I reached out to you for, uh, XPRO, yet another skill set that you guys have is um, patent drawings. And the good news is on the 25th of June, I'm going to be issued my first patent or awarded my first patent with another part of the patent uh, pending, uh, hopefully soon to follow within the next couple of months. And then I'll be exactly where I want to be uh, because having a, a full patent is, is extremely powerful. And uh, did you reach out to us before or after you actually did a patent search? So what we are actually finding out very, very often is that clients are asking us to design something, but eventually they realize, oh, if there is already patent on it. So did you check the patent prior to contacting us for the original design for that, for that concept you had, or that was afterwards? Short answer is no, I did not, which is, um, it could have been a very costly mistake. So you're exactly right, Alex. People have got to spend, it's, it's not that uh, expensive to get a patent attorney to do what they call a prior art search. Pay, in other words, pay a professional, it's less than $1,000 to spend some time. They know how to go search through the patent system. Well worth the investment before you even embark on getting your drawings, getting prototypes made, because if this idea is not novel, then you're not going to be successful. So this is what patents are about. And, and being awarded a patent is a very robust indication that you have a, a very viable product. They, they don't just award these things to anybody. So the way that I entered into the patent um, process was after I went to that fabricator with your drawings, and when just looking at the drawings, he goes, oh, my, this is a really good idea. Have you, pat have you thought about patenting it? And so at that point, fortunately, it was still a little early in the process, but I had already spent a significant amount of money um, before I really got into the patenting process. So you're exactly right. That was uh, very lucky that it was actually a novel idea. Very fortunate. Yeah, and... Uh there are always some, let's call them a loopholes in the patent stuff that even if you cannot patent the whole unit, you're able to patent something else because said, this is nothing novel, nothing crazy new, but the features that you included in the device, they are, they are new and that's what you're patenting. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Um, hopefully future clients and the people who are inventing would do that prior to actually spending money on the design, uh, we do offer something like we call industrial design, concept design, that it's not costly at all. And you basically get a drawings, you get sketches, you get idea on the paper, like, and you can show that you're a patent attorney and explain them and they will be able to search patent if anything similar exists. If sim something similar exists, then I believe the attorneys can also tell you okay, there are things that we can do to avoid this patent issue, the conflict. So there are things like that as well. And if there is nothing, then at least you didn't waste tens of thousands of dollars. You just waste $1,000 or $2,000 in the process instead of much more money bringing it to a market and you're realizing you cannot sell it. So what's the, the next plan for you? Are you planning to make your own brand, develop it and sell it on your own? or sell or actually have someone sell this for you and you collect the royalty what's your future plan if we can know that <laughs> yes yes uh the the way that i'm gonna approach this i decided early on watching shark tank and um that is one of the most educational programs you can watch as an individual inventor as you watch people who have mortgaged their home they've taken out their life savings 
and they come up with a product that is mediocre. So, uh, because they went the manufacturing route, the venture route. So, for people, I really highly recommend going the licensing route for individual inventors who have zero experience in this. And your success rate uh, it doubles, almost triples, uh, between 10 and 15 percent of licensed products are actually commercialized. So, it's well worth uh, investigating that. And if you have plenty of time and money and you're about 20 years old, Go ahead and try to manufacture it. Um, you know, people do it all the time. I just don't uh, have the, I just don't have the expertise to go through all that. Um, and I, I know that's one thing I have learned over time is that uh, you don't have the expertise, you don't have it. So that said, I now have a licensing agent, and I am focusing hard on this one company. I like their business approach and their their business profile. So. Um, what I what I intend to do is to work with them. And the other thing that I've done, Alec, is I have all those drawings of different uh, versions of the cabinet, the jewelry closet, that I'm going to share with these guys because it's a really a huge market. Wherever you have women and they have homes, for example, they're going to like you know, these custom closet companies. The way the jewelry is stored is in drawers. I mean, it's just it's not enough. So uh, that's the intent is to share this map with these uh, these folks and let them kind of choose a la carte what they'd like to work on to uh, increase their business. And then at the same time, whatever's left over, then my plan is to search for other companies that are that are interested in making different versions of it. And um, the other final thought on this is you talked about different individual parts of a product that are ultimately what gets patent, patented. So uh, this one part that I do have, this product architecture, is something that would lend itself to uh, a number of different applications. So I can see the jewelry closet being converted into a uh, bait and tackle closet for fishing gear, because that stuff's often in a uh, messy array. Um, you could do art supplies, uh, makeup, and this because it's modular. So you personalize the interior layout to what to meet your needs. And so there's really nothing like this. There are things that are called mar modular, but they're not as adaptable as this particular product architecture. Yeah, definitely. And uh, the good point you, you mentioned, and that's kind of my suggestion as well especially for someone who doesn't have much time or experience um, in bringing the product to the market is to go with the licensing route, right? So especially especially because it's a long, long process and there are a lot of moving parts involved, starting from the concept design, product design, uh, engineering drawings, prototyping, manufacturing, patenting, uh, and then you need to start maybe website design, of course, marketing material, um, marketing itself, finding a vendor who's going to sell it for you, uh, or even going to Amazon route. So there are a lot of moving parts, like just we, we counted now just more than 10, but there are many more. So license is a really, really good way to go if you just want a passive income on your invention and someone else handles everything for you. So, yeah, so hopefully the camera catches now. This is the, the product that Leslie... The rest, is, the rest is developed, and uh, this is the part of the product. So I didn't put all the jewelry inside and all the all the stuff, but this is the part of the unit that mentioned mention in this video. So she made this prototype acrylic, right? This is acrylic. Yes, that's correct. Acrylic, but original original unit is designed to be made out of sheet metal. So can you tell me that end product is going to be made out of the metal, sheet metal, aluminum, whatever, or it's going to be done out of acrylic? What's the end product going to look like? Uh, you know, that's a great question because it's all about the finish. And the nice thing about acrylic um, is that it really does have a good look and that I have found when I show people both products, the one from the sheet, the aluminum, and the other one from the acrylic, that people tend to gravitate towards the acrylic. 
But that's not to say that you couldn't have a high gloss finish on the sheet metal, right? Uh, to give it that same polish, but also have a little more rigor because the acrylic scratch is easy and uh, it's definitely not as strong, but it sure looks, it looks good. So that's something I want to, you know, work out with whomever I end up licensing this to, what, what fits into their product line better as well. That'll probably help. Yeah, de definitely. Definitely. I mean, acrylic, acrylic um, is definitely not only really great for scratch resistant material, but there is a material called polycarbonate PC. Uh, it's basically a bulletproof material and they can be tinted in any colors, red, black, whatever. And it will really have a really nice surface finish, but you're right. Aluminium can also have any finishes you want. So it's really what makes more sense for, for the market and for whoever is buying it. Definitely. Okay. So the next step, the next step for you is, uh, waiting for that patent to be finished. Right. And then you are starting to license it. Yes. Ultimately. And then while that is in the process of happening, I will then move into designing the, the next use of this product architecture. And then that's a whole nother, uh, route to go you know who who are the you have to figure out well what what is the market and who are the people that would be interested in licensing somebody like bass pro so um yeah it's, it's a really exciting time now i know it, it sounds really hard we talk about a lot of challenges today for the individual inventor the good news is is during the pandemic companies uh scaled back a lot on their product development not knowing where the market was going to go where it was headed so it's like a 40% decrease in product development across markets. But the good news is it's a good time then for inventors because companies are really looking for innovative new products. So it is a good time to, to get into this business if you're going to do it. So, um, you know, I can't rec recommend it highly enough. And then, Alec, if I could do uh, – just let everybody know that I do have a, a very nice website that I've paid an expert to put together, and it's thejewelrycloset.co. It's thejewelrycloset.co. So I'd love for people to look at that website, and I really I'm, I can't wait to get this on the market. And your skill set and your responsiveness, your flexibility, all of the, the qualities that really are desperately needed in this kind of business. We're, we're all there and just really, really outstanding. So thank you so much for all of your support through this, through this process. No, of course, we're going to link your website um, <clears throat> under this video so people can check it out. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for giving us the chance to develop this product and hopefully we're going to be working on the next version, the next version and make the next podcast where actually this is being in the market, being sold by who knows who. Uh, one thing I also want to, to mention is that you're completely right about COVID time, 20, 20, 2019, 2020, 2021. Big companies really scaled back on their product development, but a lot of new inventors came through. Like We had so many clients in those years that were full of ideas, full of ideas. But main thing is that when they develop the product, they're not really familiar, educated, what next? So that's kind of stuck point for all of, most of the people who develop in the product is they don't know, okay, now I have a product, it's working, looks great, what now? And then when they figure out what now, well, some of them actually give up. They don't even go for licensing or anything. So I strongly encourage people, uh, ask questions, ask, find those groups like you found um, who are helping inventors, um, ask us here at Expro. We are more than happy to help you, to guide you through. We cannot help you with marketing stuff and all, but we have a partners that can really, really help with that. Just develop your idea and try to sell it. Don't just give up on it. Right. And uh, there is a, an association of inventors across the United States. And I belong to the local one in the national capital area. But those groups are invaluable as far as finding resources to educate you. And so that was something I missed out on as well. It, it's, been a, it's been a rough go. <laughs> but I feel really proud of the fact that I got here 
uh, to this point, and I'm not stopping. I mean, I'm still in progress. So uh, progress is what matters. And uh, yeah, it's an exciting time. So thanks so much, very much for having me today. I really appreciate it. No, definitely. Thank you. Thank you for for joining us, and uh, hopefully we'll be in touch with next prototype, with next version. Yes, absolutely, Alex. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Leslie. Have a great day. You too. Bye, Bye now. Bye.